Lovely to see you, Hugh. Good to see you too. 14 years of the Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. Is it like meeting an old friend again, slipping on an old coat? Very much. Uh, it, it's even more than that. I, uh, it's hard to explain because as an actor, you have to get inside. The, you kind of got to fall in love with the character, no matter what the flaws are to play it so it's almost weirdly like another marriage it's some part like a part of you and it's so much easier for me now to slip in and out of it it was difficult really difficult at first um and yet what i love about this is there's always something different to play this this wolverine is a very different wolverine to any other one and the writers have been helping out a lot with that i love the quirkiness of wolverine going back to the 70s and you me said too. That's where he belongs. Yeah, I think he stopped there. I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff about him hiding out in the woods for years. And I think it was literally because Rick Astley and Wham came out. <laughs> I think he was like, I, I don't want to be part of this society. <laughs> and then he saw leg warm and she's like, that's it. I'm in the cave. <laughs> do you think you missed a great opportunity to do some Saturday Night Fever dancing? It's though? a good point. I'd it's a really good it. point. Damn it. I didn't think of that. We used to play blurred lines on set. That should have been a little more Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slipping into the character again with the facial hair, because you've had to live with the facial <laughs> hair for years. Yes. Does your wife like it? No. No, she doesn't. It's a little better. It looks ridiculous, those mutton chops, but there's a little bit of runway space here, if you know what I mean, mm. for kissing. But this isn't all bad. <laughs> now I'm playing Blackbeard. Yeah, she's like, enough already. Enough already. Yeah. As she says quite, uh, I think, uh, humorously, but semi-seriously, she says, you know, I'm married to an actor. I get to have an affair every three months. So that's kind of... With that hairy guy. All different. Hey, I met her on a prison drama covered with tats. So you're getting an idea of what Deb's into, all right? <laughs> yeah, you're up to the anemone line cut. next. <laughs> if I was playing newsreader, I don't think I'd be getting a lot of action. <laughs> no, she doesn't like the clean cut. All right, here's question number one from Jonesy. I'm sure it'll be insightful. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, Hugh. Jonesy here. Looking good, mate. What are you bench pressing Thanks. these days? Yeah, good on you. <laughs> you know, it's clear that the post credit scenes of The Wolverine was a lead into this film X-Men, Days of Future Past. And interestingly, Wolverine... Oh, that's loses Sorry, let's fast forward to that. Does it have something to do with Magneto's ability to manipulate metal? Oh, forget it. That's very boring. Don't worry about him. Um, <laughs> when, Good on you, Jonesy. When, um, when I left the film, because my sons haven't seen the other ones in the series, yep. and I love their question. They say, are the mutants goodies or baddies? And is the man who wants to save the world and destroy the mutants goodies or baddies? And I love the fact it's all shades of grey, really, all isn't shades. it? It always has been. The original comic... By the way, how old are you, boy? 13 and 11. My son was like... He said, are the Sentinels really about climate change? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, that idea that we might miss the moment in history where it's too late and we, the only thing is then we go back in the past to fix it. And I was like, I hadn't thought of that. But it does speak to kids in that way. And I think for a summer blockbuster, it's something I'm proud of to be part of something that, that has shades of grey. The original comic book was really an allegory of Mount Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Magneto mm -hmm. being Malcolm X and uh, Pro uh, Professor Xavier being uh, Martin Luther King. And so it's always had that depth, I suppose, and sort of ambitious thematic side to it. Now that we're talking about depth, you just mentioned Shades of Grey. What about mm. Wolverine in Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? There could be some serious bondage going <laughs> on with those claws. <laughs> claws That's in, claws point. out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, I don't want to waste time, but he does want me to ask one more question. All right, come on, James. Okay, here's the last one. Let's okay. see if I can bring it yeah. home with this. Thanks for your time, Hugh, and thank you for giving my questions the respect that they deserve. Oh, what is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hugh, it's a privilege to see you again. It's great to see you too. It's and a thank Jonesy for all that effort, you know, just yeah. whacking off a couple of questions in the studio because he's now at home and not coming here to meet up with me. You know? I think whacking off's the expression. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I've been in America too long. <laughs>